Hi, my name is John Kim. I'm going to be proving some uh, inverse trigonometric functions for you. Some of your teachers might want to, uh, will probably put this on a test to prove uh, some of the inverse trigonometric functions. Some teachers do not, but here's a proof uh, for your information, for your help. Um, hope it helps. First, we're going to show the derivative of the sine inverse is equal to 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared the derivative of cosine, tangent inverse, cotangent, secant, secant inverse, cosecant inverse. I'm also going to be doing this one. Um, this looks like a lot of information right here. So I'm going to try to break it down for you. There's a pattern to this. The sine and the cosine, sine, cosine, the inverse, not invert, inverse, co-functions, and you notice that there's a minus right over there. The tangent and the cotangent, the co-functions, that means one of them has a plus, one of them has a minus. The secant and the cosecant, they're also co-functions. It's the same thing with the minus or a plus. So all you have to do is remember this one, the tangent inverse and the secant inverse, and you can figure out how to get the cosine inverse, the cotangent, and the cosecant inverse. I'm going to be proving number seven for you, where uh, you can try to find the derivative of the sine inverse of x over a constant a. And this will probably be one of the applications of some of your homeworks that you're going to be getting. So memorize this one too as well. Okay. Uh, the first one you have to know is Sokotoa. The sine of the angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. I'm sure you're familiar with most of these. Cosine of the angle is equal to the adjacent side of the hypotenuse. Tangent of the angle is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. It's the ratio of the opposite to the adjacent. Um, some other information that you need is 1 over tangent is cotangent. These are reciprocal functions. 1 over the sine is the cosecant. If you flip the left side and the right side, the sine is equal to 1 over cosecant of x. So let's get started. Let's prove the first one. Okay. Prove the derivative with respect to x of the sine inverse of x is equal to 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. Uh, the first thing we're going to do, that's what we're looking for. We're going to set this as y. y, I don't know, call it f of x, y, same thing. y is equal to the sine inverse of x. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the, I'm going to use a different marker, orange this time. We're going to take the sine of the left side. We're going to take the sine of the right side. The reason why is because the sine and the sine inverse, it cancels out. So, because they're inverse functions, on the right-hand side of the equation, you have y. On the left-hand side of the equation, you have sine of y, excuse me, on the right side you have x, excuse me. So, at this stage, you have to draw the triangle. This is when the triangle is going to be extremely helpful. The sine of that angle is equal to x over 1, sine is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And you have to figure out what this length is before you can actually do the rest. So I'm going to do this once for you. a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared using the Pythagorean theorem. a squared, we can call that a, we don't know what that is, plus b squared, which is x squared, equals 1. 1 squared is 1. a squared is equal to, this is what you're looking for, 1 minus x squared. a is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. And I'm going to use green for this square root of 1 minus x squared. Make sure you know how to get this third side uh, consistently because you're going to be doing it for the rest of the uh, theorems and proofs. Um, now I'm just going to rewrite it nicely. The sine of the angle y is equal to x. And now I'm going to take the derivative of the left side and the derivative of the right side. Let's use pink this side. Derivative respect to x and the derivative with respect to x of this function. On the left side, the derivative of sine 
is going to be cosine of y times, so as a derivative sign, it's cosine of y, because you should know that by now, hopefully. And the derivative of y, which is the chain portion, is going to be dy over dx. The derivative of x with respect to x is going to be 1 times dx over dx. We don't need to put that. That's the chain portion. It's just going to be 1. We're solving for dy dx. Uh, divided by cosine, you end up with 1 over cosine of y. We know that the cosine is the reciprocal function for the secant. That becomes a secant of y. Now we have to reference this. The secant of that angle is the ratio of the adjacent side, um, sorry, hypotenuse over adjacent. The cosine was the adjacent of hypotenuse, so the secant is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. The ratio of the hypotenuse over the adjacent, which is 1 minus x squared. QED. Quad iratus demonstrated. So I have demonstrated that the derivative, the sine inverse, right here, is equal to square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay? That's the first one. So we're going to do the third one now. Let me put this out. This is page 2. Uh, number 3. Save a tree if you can. The derivative with respect to x of the tangent inverse of x. And show that that's equal to 1 over x squared. I'm sorry, 1 over 1 plus x squared. Um, again, we do the same thing. We're going to call this y. It's the same process every single time. So once you get the first process down, the second and the third and the fourth should be easy. I'm not going to do number two number four, number six for you, but it's the same process every single time. First, I'm going to call it y equals the tangent inverse of x. Next thing we did was we took, instead of the side inverse, we want to do the tangent of both sides. Take the tangent of the left side, take the tangent of the right side because of this tangent function. Tangent of y is equal to Tangent of the tangent inverse, these are inverse functions, therefore you end up with just x. We draw the, at this stage, we draw the triangle again. Let's call this y. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. If you're more comfortable this way, just you put x over 1. It's the opposite over the adjacent. And by now, uh, if you want to work this out, you can. You have to use the Pythagorean theorem, it's going to be 1 plus x squared. Now, what do we do with that? Tangent, the same process, we take the derivative of this to the left side, and we take the derivative to the right side. The derivative of the tangent is, um, I'm going to use black pen here, secant so squared of y times the chain portion of y, which is dy dx. And the derivative with respect to x of dx over d, uh, dx is going to be just 1. I'm going to move this guy over here. 1 dy dx is equal to, how do I move it? Divide it. 1 over secant squared of y. 1 over secant is going to be the cosine of y. And then squared because it's squared over here. I remember that dy over dx, the cosine of y, according to that angle y, is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's going to be 1 over square root of 1 plus x squared squared this time. And that becomes 1 over 1 plus x squared because the square and the square root cancel. There it is. QED. It wasn't too bad. Just remember that since this is a tangent inverse function, you have to take the tangent of both sides. So let's do equation. Was that right? Yeah, that was right. Let's do equation number five now. The derivative with respect to x of 